Hello again. All right, so today we're going to continue talking about the endocrine system. We're still introducing endocrine. Uh, we're not talking about specific organs yet or specific hormones because we want to talk about the chemistry of the hormones. So we're going to give you some information about um, the different types of hormones that we have, you know, what their chemistry is and how they work. And then we're going to get into in the, in the following lectures about particular endocrine organs and particular hormones and what they do. So let's move forward. All right. So when we think about hormones, they come in uh, two flavors, if you would like to use that word, two main classes. There's amino acid-based hormones. So remember, amino acids are your building blocks to proteins. So you're going to have uh, small uh, hormones. Uh, they can be a couple of amino acids. Uh, they can be rather large, uh, fully formed proteins, but amino acid-based. So just like uh, how we've talked about how you can make uh, proteins from DNA. So these are going to be protein hormones. Um, and then you have steroid-based hormones. So if you go back to your chemistry, if you don't remember this from your early chemistry, go back and read um, about organic molecules and, and remember about steroids. And steroids are something that are derived from cholesterol. It's kind of the building block of steroid hormones. And so examples of steroid hormones are your gonadal hormones, like testosterone and estrogen, and some of your adrenocortico uh, hormones or adrenal, adrenocortical hormones. And so again, we're going to go through specific hormones and where they're made and what they do as we move through the lectures. But right now, just um, understand that you have two main types, amino acid and steroid, and they work in different ways. And I'm going to show you how they, um, how they work chemically. So when you think about how a hormone works, okay, it, it depends how it's going to work. It depends on what its chemistry is um, and where its receptor is. And so when we think about this, uh, Hormones can be either be water soluble or hydrophilic, and these are going to be all of your amino acid based hormones except for thyroid hormone. Um, I, I hate to say always because there's always an exception, <laughs> and I, I just said always, but usually there's an exception to every rule. So in the case of water soluble hormones, all of your hormones that are amino acid based are water soluble except for thyroid hormone. So these are considered hydrophilic. That means water loving, uh, and so that means they cannot cross the cell membrane. So if you remember, you've got your um, plasma bilayer that makes your cell membrane. They can't cross. So they're going to have to have some type of receptor on the plasma membrane. So they're going to be in the blood. They're going to come to the cell. They're going to bind a receptor. And they're going to work by causing something happening inside the cell uh, using what's called a second messenger system. And so I'm going to explain what that means. So they use a G protein and second messenger system because these hormones won't go into the cell. Now you have lipid soluble uh, hormones and these are your steroid hormones and also thyroid hormone. And so your steroid hormones and thyroid hormones are hydrophobic. That means they're uh, water hating and they will cross the cell. Okay, they can cross inside into the inside of the cell. And so their receptors, instead of being on the outside, they're actually going to be on the inside of the cell. And they're used to activate genes, okay? So they're used to, they do something with your DNA. So again, hydrophilic and hydrophobic, water-soluble versus lipid-soluble. Um, so again, uh, we're going to talk about these different hormones and how those second messenger work and how these intracellular receptors work. So if you have an amino acid, uh, hormone, okay, except for thyroid hormone, then it's going to bind to a receptor on the outside. And so remember, you have a cell and it's going to have a, a, some kind of a protein in its plasma membrane. And it's going to have a particular shape, okay? And so whatever hormone is going to, that is going to bind to that receptor, that's its target, will have kind of the mirror image or reverse image of that uh, protein and there's kind of a lock and key. And so that means these amino acid um, hormones can find a receptor that matches them on the plasma membrane of their target cell. So the hormone is the first messenger. It's going to bind the receptor. Now once it binds the receptor, it starts a cascade. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of put a little wiggly line. This is a cascade effect, which means it's going to be step, 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 step. Several things to happen. And so the first thing that happens is you activate a G protein. And I'm going to show you this in, on a schematic in just a second. And this G protein then does the next step, which activates something called adenylate cyclase. Okay? Then the next step, adenylate cyclase, will convert ATP to cyclic AMP. 
Cyclic AMP, CAMP, is the second messenger, so second messenger system. So you have a hormone binder receptor, and the, the result is you get this cyclic AMP. Now the cyclic AMP, what it does is it can cause the activation of something called a protein kinase that will phosphorylate or add a phosphor, uh, phosphate group to proteins. And this can either inactivate or activate the protein, depending on what the phosphorylation is. And um, it's that CN CAMP will do that as long as it's active, um, but then you're going to degrade it using something called phosphodiesterase. So you have an enzyme called phosphodiesterase that will break that down. The beauty of second messenger system is because of this cascade, it tends to amplify. So you get this huge amplification effect. You get one of like if one uh, hormone molecule was to bind the receptor, you get an amplification inside the cell and you get an amplification of the um, effect. So what does this look like? So this is from your book. It's kind of a cute little picture. It shows you this cascade effect, okay? So you've got uh, kind of a relay. So it's kind of like handing off the baton to the, you know, in, a, in, a, in a race where you're running and you hand off the baton to the next runner. It's kind of like that. So what happens is you have, and what happened was, so the hormone, the first messenger, is going to bind to that plasma uh, receptor, plasma membrane, membrane receptor, all right? then that's going to activate something called a G protein, okay? And it does that by basically converting this GDP, um, GTP to GDP. It's a similar enzyme to ATP. This active, or, yeah, you, uh, yeah, I said that right. You get, you get GTP binding and, and then the release of GDP. All right, so then this uh, GTP activated G protein, all right, it's then going to find its next runner and give it and, and give off the baton and it's going to bind to adenylate cyclase all right now this g protein that's considered activating the adenylate cyclase now this member asc that means it's some kind of a protein asc is a protein so this adenylate cyclase that means it can it could cause some kind of reaction catalyze some kind of reaction it converts atp into cyclic amp all right Remember, cyclic AMP, that's what we want. This is the second messenger. All right, so now we have the second messenger, and its job, because, again, what it can do is it can activate something called a protein kinase. So it takes an inactive protein kinase, which is some kind of an enzyme, and turns it into an active protein kinase. This active protein kinase can then go throughout the cell. It's going to trigger some kind of response either by activating or deactivating or phosphorylating, doing something, causing some kind of a response. It can activate enzymes, it can st uh, stimulate cellular secretion, it can open ion channels, lots and lots of things, all right? So the hormone itself doesn't actually do anything. It doesn't cause any response, okay? What it does is it, it starts this cascade so that you get cyclic AMP and the activation of protein kinase then something's going to happen, okay? So we'll be talking later on about different hormones. And so once the hormone binds, we'll talk about what this end result is as we move through the different organs and the different hormones, okay? So just pay attention when you're learning about your hormones, you know, uh, what, is the, what, is the, what does the cyclic AMP do? What does that activated protein kinase do? What's the end result? So you, you'll want to kind of write that down for each hormone as you move through it. And you can find that information in your book, and then I'll, I'll be lecturing on that as well. All right, so the, the other kind of hormone are your steroid hormones, which also includes that thyroid hormone, which is actually an amino acid hormone. It's that, ex that exception. And these are, uh, these are lipid uh, soluble, which means are in their hydrophobic, which means they will go through the plasma membrane. And so they will go through the cell, go into the target cell, and the receptor that they're looking for is actually inside the cell. So they have intracellular receptors. And so you're going to get something that's going to be able to go to the DNA. All right, I'm going to show you a picture of this. And this is going to promote DNA transcription. So remember, transcription is that production of messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is what you need for protein synthesis. So what you should be seeing is if you have a steroid hormone or thyroid hormone, it promotes metabolic activities, protein synthesis of structural proteins, uh, proteins that you may need to export from the cell. So these are important types of hormones, okay? So let's show you what that looks like. So here's your steroid hormone, okay? It's going to cross into the cell cytoplasm. 
the receptor protein, the lock and key, is going to be inside the cytoplasm. Those are going to bind and form this receptor hormone complex. Okay? This receptor hormone complex will then enter into the nucleus, which is where your DNA is, right? This is going to cause the initiation of uh, transcription of the genes to mRNA. So you're going to get that transcription of mRNA. The mRNA will then leave the cell nucleus and go out into the uh, cytoplasm where it'll, be, it'll find the rRNA, ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA. You'll bring those amino acids uh, along and you'll build a protein, protein synthesis. So you might want to go back and review some of the steps of protein synthesis if you don't remember. All right, so steroid hormone enters into the cell, binds its receptor, goes into the nucleus, starts uh, the initiation of transcription of a gene. That forms mRNA. mRNA will then exit the cytoplasm, and you'll get protein synthesis translation of that mRNA into an actual protein. Okay, so that's what steroid hormones do and thyroid hormone. Oh, we're, we're done. All right, so um, I've got another video. We're going to talk about how all this is regulated. So what is what is the regulation mechanism uh, behind hormones? All right, see you in just a little bit.